Welcome, residents of the Doctor DC's Double Dose. What? Sure, well, let's do that one then. Okay. Yeah, let's. I thought you said we were doing the DC stuff. I thought the DC one was the Double Dose. No, that's the special. The Double Dose is all of the not DC stuff. That's the special. Welcome, stuff. residents, to the Doctor DC special episode. Sure. All about DC at San Diego Comic Con. Wow. And across from me is the doctor himself. Hello. <laughs> I'm just going to keep the rest in. I don't care. Oh, my God. <gasps> what a nightmare. It's my life. <laughs> That's right. San Diego Comic-Con has happened. Mm-hmm. We've got a lot to talk about. So much. DC specifically, we're going to do in this episode. Yeah. If you want to hear about the other stuff, you're going to have to subscribe. That's right. Patreon.com slash Dr. DC. <laughs> Buy right. our merch. Buy our merch. <laughs> and content yes uh so i've broken it down into a few different sections sure yeah but overall not without going into specifics how did you feel about this san diego comic-con because obviously dc film wasn't involved this year yeah i mean yes i mean very very like the dc you like eu was not involved this year dc didn't do a hall h presentation that was another thing um but i mean in general i i thought there was some cool stuff i mean Cool stuff generally from Comic Con. Obviously, like lots and lots of stuff that non DC as well. But the DC stuff, I was actually pretty happy. I mean, we talked about it, I think, last week. We tried to predict what was going to happen. I think we were generally pretty close. You know, little bits and pieces. We got some sort of TV castings. We got a little bit of information about DC Universe. Mm -hmm. Not really a ton on the film side. Um, some stuff about comics and things like that. Like, I, I actually thought it was pretty, I, I, it's what I expected, right? Would I, I mean, obviously I would love to, you know, come out of Comic-Con with a bunch of big fucking news and like a huge trailer or something. But I, I think I'm content that DC is content not to have to compete to, yeah. to do their own thing and trust that it'll work. And so I think I was actually quite happy with a sort of smaller scale, comic-con presence basically i agree with that. yeah oh yeah definitely what about you um so even from dc i think there are some uh i gave it, it, the dc dc eu not being involved yeah give the opportunity for some other dc stuff to get some 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 sun and yeah some focus here and i really enjoyed that part so yeah. um the way that I've broken this up is uh, uh, first I put some sort of like general sort of DC news. Okay. Then uh, uh, we'll do the DC movies that are coming up okay. and then we'll go into the television. Sure. Obviously that's the, the big focus. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So first piece of general DC news to come out of this was that DC revealed strong reprint strategy despite Dido's disapproval. Uh, it, uh, yeah, not Dido. Uh, Didio. 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 Didio, yeah. yeah. Dido couldn't be reached for comment. Uh, <laughs> but her tea's got cold, so I'm, I'm wondering, wondering why if she would get out of bed at all. Yeah. It's um, <laughs> um, I think it's something to do with Stan. Yeah. Oh. Didio, uh, Dan Didio, one of the co-publishers of DC Comics, sort of generally kind of, I, I, won't, I won't say reviled, but there's a lot of controversial opinions about Didio. But he said in a panel that like when they reprint old comics, they sell very well and maybe better than some of the new comics. Yeah, And definitely. he sort of acknowledged that it's maybe a failure on their part. Now, People have interpreted that in different ways. You know, I saw like Jerry Conway, a very famous comic creator from an earlier sort of era of comics, co-creator of Firestorm and stuff like that. He said, you know, maybe you should listen to like what we knew back then that you don't seem to know now, which I think is actually not the lesson. I think. No. I, I think what it is is that the, the 
a lot of the people still buying comics are the people that were like, we're still targeting comics at the, the people that were buying them 30 or 40 years ago. So of course, when those reprints and stuff come out, those people are going to go for them because I don't know that comics, even though we're increasing every year, more diversity, more things like that. I don't know that comics have necessarily done a great job of bringing in new readers in those categories. You know, those of us that are not, asshole douchebags <laughs> speak for yourself love when those things happen anyway but i don't know that they've necessarily done a great job of like expanding readership into though like the demographics that they are meant to be now representing and i think if they did a better job of that i don't know what that means if yeah that's more outreach or more of those characters in uh tv shows or more uh you know putting comics in schools or like i I actually don't know what the strategy is. I don't know what that what to do there. But I think that's more what it means than anything. That there's a failure to reach the audience that they want to reach. They still have all of the white guys from forever. Yeah. You know, except, for, rid the, of those. except yeah. for the ones that are too racist to handle, you know, Black Wally West or whatever. But I think that's why those reprints do so well is that, you know, we already have that market. Of course they do well. Exactly. So I think it does expose a failure, but I think there's been a little bit of like conflict around what that represents or what that failure actually is. But yeah. But the fact that he, he was very, Didio was very frank about it says something, I guess. He's kind of frank about everything, but yeah. Well, I mean, he is, but at the same time, he's also like, you know, I, he's not necessarily the guy I would trust to, to fix it properly. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know? Definitely. Um, all right. Next piece of news. Sure. DC announces new Strange Adventure series from Mr. Miracle Team and Doc Sh- Shaner. Yes, that's right. So they announced this basically on the heels of the Eisner Awards where Mr. Miracle and Mitch Garads and Tom King did very well. Um, but yeah, so they're doing a new series. I actually, I couldn't find whether or not it's uh, like a maxi series or a mini series or an ongoing. I uh, assume it's 12 issues like Mr. Miracle was. Yeah. It, it or like Omega Man was. Yeah. It, it, ha- it doesn't, it doesn't actually say, but it's a, it, yeah. Strange adventures, which was an old DC title, but it's, it's going to be an Adam strange story. Mm hmm. Um, if it follows in the footsteps of things like Omega Men and Mr. Miracle and even their work on like Vision, stuff like that over at Marvel, then it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait. If it follows in the footsteps of Heroes in Crisis. <laughs> no one's going to be very Less happy. So. But yeah. to be honest, like I think if they have an idea for a specific character, a story with a specific character... And then they do this mini series. I expect it to be like the, the former example. I think the problem with Heroes in Crisis was I actually don't know necessarily that Tom King has demonstrated that he can do an event book, something that affects all of continuity where people have to come in from different angles and different yeah. areas. And then they, after the event, they have to go back out into the world, right? To be used by other creators. I don't know that he's demonstrated a sort of facility with that yet. Um, I will say, I mean, as an artist, Mitch Garrett's work on Heroes in Crisis was still immaculate, even though I didn't like the story. My issues with Heroes in Crisis are largely story-based, um, not really about the artwork. Um, so to me, I I have more confidence in this Strange Adventures thing because I'm sort of expecting it to have come from a place like Mr. Miracle or something where... Tom King has said, I have an idea for this character. It's a contained story and I want to tell it. And that's it. And I think that that I have more confidence in than if he was doing another big event book or even like, you know, there's been mixed reviews to some of this run on Batman, which is ongoing, right? Yeah. It's not just like 12 issues and out. So um, I'm optimistic about this one. I am too. I mean, plus the- Adam Strange, cool character. I hope it's got that kind of retro. You know, with his jetpack, like there's, you could do fun. You can do fun things with like a human on and space adventures. What they've it's done, like, it's yeah. like pulp kind of sci-fi, right? What they did with Mister Miracle, I mean, that's gives them enough clout cl- to go. Yeah, I mean, and Omega Men, frankly, that was a terrific series, a really, really kind of inspired series. Um, so I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. We'll see if I live to regret that or not. <laughs> you tend to. Uh, <laughs> 
Next question, or sorry, next piece of oh. news. Jesus Christ, I'm off. I my know game. it's weird not to have questions. Uh, this is a thing that I am super excited about, sure. and something that I think that you have some some uh, experience with. DC Universe Online. Yeah. Nintendo Switch release date revealed. Oh, it's coming to the Switch. Hell yeah! Nice. Hell yeah! Why do I want to play this? Uh, you want me to sell you one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. A full range of power sets and sort of character looks and types. You get to explore. Is this like Ultimate Alliance kind of game? No, play? It's, a, it's an MMO. Ooh. It's like playing World of Warcraft or Lotro, but you're in the DC universe. You get a mentor that's one of the Trinity, or if you're a villain, one of uh, like Luthor, Joker, or Circe. Uh, you get to do missions alongside all sorts of heroes and villains and against heroes and villains from uh, like intergang and the cult of crime to grud to, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, penguin to uh, the Sinestro Corps. Like you get to visit Atlantis and, oh, uh, really? and New Genesis and Central City and the Watchtower. You can work your way to becoming a Justice League member. I can get all. I can go all along the Watchtower. Yeah, you actually can. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's so much fun. Uh, it's fun to play in that community. I find and. You get a whole, not only do you get to sort of select your power sets, but you also get like ability trees as well. So if you want to be a guy with ice powers, but you also shoot guns, you can. Or if you <laughs> want to have fire powers and a staff or what, like you, you, it's almost like infinite combinations of what type of character, what type of abilities you can have. It's, it's a very, very fun game. Is the storyline good? It is. The basic premise is that. Um, in a different timeline, the Society of Supervillains beats the Justice League. Luthor kills Superman and Wonder Woman and a lot of the other heroes die. And it's only when the Justice League is defeated that Brainiac shows himself and starts taking over the world. And that world's Luthor comes back in time with uh, these nanites of Brainiacs that have been harvesting the powers of superheroes and releases them into the atmosphere to create enough metahumans to fight Brainiac when he arrives wow. in the present. Um, I'm stoked about this. And that's the, the premise of the game. Hell yeah. So the villains and the heroes are recruiting these new metahumans, which is you, the player, mm -hmm. uh, and training them to be ready to fight on the front lines of this war with Brainiac. Fuck yeah. Yeah. I'm up for this. It's very cool. Uh, now let's get into the DC movie releases. Sure. Announcements, at yep. least. Number one, we got a Lego Batman movie. Batman Family Matters. Right. Uh, what do you know about this? Very little. Uh, Extremely little. I did enjoy the Lego Batman movie. I mean, I, we've talked about this before. I kind of came out of that one like, yeah, it was fine. If it came out before the Lego movie, I would have thought it was incredible. And this it, it is was also just, it was just like that. I was used to what the sensibility was. Uh, yeah, and this isn't like on par with the like Lego Batman movie as much as it is with the like Lego Batman straight to DVD one. Oh, it's it's one of those. Yeah, okay. yeah. Those are actually a ton of fun. I have a couple of them that I like watching with uh, my daughter that are a ton of fun. There's an Aquaman one that I have, and a Flash one. Um, so yeah, if it's another of those, yeah, then yeah, I'm yeah. all about it. Though they're very, very silly and fun and like entertaining, good family kind of movies. So the summary for this one is: In Lego DC Batman Family Matters, suspicion is on high after Batman, Batgirl, Robin, and other DC superheroes receive mysterious invitations. However, family values must remain strong when Batman and his team encounter the villainous Red Hood, who is. <sighs> obsessed with destroying the bat family and all of gotham city wow interesting they're doing like a family friendly version of it <laughs> under the red light <laughs> which is hilarious very funny yeah yeah i mean i i actually i really love those direct to dvd ones they're a ton of fun i'm all about that yeah hell yeah yeah uh the next one uh i know we've talked about this comic i know that this that this story is one that is uh close to your heart and one that you've really enjoyed okay. um We've gotten a little taste of it through the uh, um, CW uh, Arrowverse, okay. uh, and I'm not sure if we've talked about this movie being announced, but I but I know that they talked about it uh, during San Diego Comic Con. That is Superman Red Sun, the animated movie. 
Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so the the way that the animated sort of division has been going is that basically every year they put out two or three films. One is like a um really like uh like an adaptation of an else world or something. One is a version of a story from the comics and one might be like just something like a new story, you know, something like that, right? Um so they've done a you know they've done Gotham by Gaslight they've done like the new frontier mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they've done like they've done a bunch of these sort of else worldy books uh Red Sun yeah as the next one is actually very exciting um as I have issues with Mark Millar in general but I I love Red Sun yeah. that book is like that was, I read that when I was starting to get back into comics and I was like, holy shit. Yes. Love it. Um, I hope that they do it in the way they kind of did like Dark Knight Returns where the animation style matches like the comic art style a bit as opposed to just being like in a generic sort of house animation style, but doing the story. I, I, I really want it to feel like that comic because that's a big part of the mood and the feel of it. Um, but yeah, for those that don't know or don't remember superman red sun is an elseworld story where instead of crash landing in kansas he lands in uh the ukraine in soviet ukraine and is raised under the soviet union by soviet principles he's not explicitly evil but he's raised with a different sense of right and wrong than if he grew up yeah. in in kansas with the kents and uh, it's a really, like, amazing story with cool versions of, like, you know, the Batman is Russian in that one. And his parents are political dissidents that sort of fought against Superman and Stalin. And they are killed. You know, like, it's just a t- little twists on the actual story. But it's, re- like, really, really brilliant kind of I'm super version. interested in, yeah. like... Very it, self-contained, too. You know, like, I, I know it's part of the multiverse. It's Earth 30. But I need to see very little else come out of that. Superman Red Sun is a really great little bottle episode, basically a bottle story. And it's it just sort of stands on its own. It's, it's really something. Hell L- yeah. Luthor is the hero of, of that story. I'm stoked for this. Yeah. I, I, I think this is going to be great. Yeah. Um, next story, Justice League Dark Apocalypse War movie announced. Yeah, we're getting another Justice League Dark movie. The first one was kind of loosely based on the first arc from Justice League Dark in the New 52. And it included Swamp Thing, Constantine, Zatanna, Black Orchid, um, and, and some other characters. Um, this one, Apocalypse War. I, I mean, Justice League Dark is going up against Dark Side and stuff like that. Is, is that the idea here? I think that's what, that's what it was. Because that's very interesting. Dark Side has made appearances in this sort of new 52, like post Flashpoint era of like the animated universe. She didn't like that. She did not like that. You know, first Darkseid showed up in Justice League War. He also showed up in the Death of Superman uh, and like Reign of the Superman um, uh, adaptation. Um, so, yeah, I'd be interested to see where the Justice League Dark comes into this. I actually don't know too much about this one, but I'm all for it. I assume Matt Ryan is voicing Constantine again because he's kind of like the de facto Constantine in general now. Yeah, well, exactly. Um the film is a sequel to the 2017's Justice League Dark, uh, one of the few R-rated DC Universe original movies. Justice League Dark saw Batman, obviously, it's assemb- assembling a team of magic-based heroes to deal with a supernatural threat. The team included John Constantine, voiced by live-action Constantine actor Matt Ryan, uh, Zatanna, Swamp Thing, Deadman, Etrigan, Black Orchid, and bringing some of DC's har- darker heroes to a wider audience. Yeah. DC, did not, DC did not confirm which heroes would... Uh, be featured in this movie though the title suggests uh, the new gods of apocalypse and new genesis will have a role to play right as the first justice league dark movie uh the sequel will take place in the ongoing dc universe original movie no word on whether the sequel will will be r-rated i assume it will and i I think it is interesting because the new gods technically have this very sort of spiritual background, including the source and all these things. But the new gods always feel more like 
sci fi, like even when Kirby wrote them, they feel more like sci fi than magic. So it'll be interesting to see those two kind of come together, uh, like these very magic based characters with these ones that are sort of ambiguously high concept, sciency, a little spiritual, but very much like, like sci fi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I think it'll be interesting. Yeah. Uh, this final movie, uh, or uh, second, the final animated movie, sure, uh, is another Superman movie. Okay, Superman Man of Tomorrow movie was announced, uh, based on a particular. So, um, uh, I actually didn't see this announcement, what? I missed this one entirely. Um, so Superman Red Sun is obviously based on the comic book story of the same name. Superman Man of Tomorrow will be an original story featuring young Clark Kent still early in his career as Superman. Oh, interesting. So not a lot of other details available for that, but... Yeah, I'm into that. And you know what? You know, I, I know obviously, you know, when you're making these animated films, you know, adapting the stories from the comics makes a ton of sense. First of all, there's a ton of stories. They're pretty cool. And it would be neat to see versions of them. Uh, and fans want that, but I'm all for you know some original, original content stuff. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. Is it in the sort of DC, the new DC animated universe sort of style and universe, or is it like in the old like animated series style? Or yeah, they haven't. Do, do we know? No, we don't know that is? much yet. So I, I'd be curious to see uh, where this kind of lands up. Yeah, yeah, but, I'm interested in that. Yeah, definitely. The 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 formative years of a young Clark and. You know, not written by Frank Miller. So. <laughs> That's all we want. That's literally all I want. <laughs> uh, this last piece of information is some DCEU information, which is that the uh, uh, director from the recent It movies right. is uh, is been in, uh, in the talks about taking over the Flash movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is a prominently. Uh, uh, this is Andy Muschietti, or I, I can't pronounce the name. Muschietti? I'm going to butcher it Muschietti? if I try. Yeah. Uh, who's uh, who's a prominently a uh, uh, a horror director? But he did again, Mama? He did it. Uh, but again, like, isn't this like basically the way DC's going? James Wan, David yeah. Sandberg. You're like taking, taking horror directors and making them into like superheroes. They've got the right sensibility for things that are beyond like the natural world. Maybe. Well, taking things that are, are extreme and making them grounded and, and seem like they could actually happen, yeah. right? Uh, I, or just I, being able to like play with emotion. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, you know, Aquaman and Shazam are two very different movies. Aquaman, I think, really fits into like a relatively standard action adventure kind of mold. Shazam is like, with the exception of a couple of sort of gratuitously violent yeah. scenes, is generally a pretty family friendly movie. Um, very like comedy focused. Yeah. Um, so I'd be interesting to it'd be interested rather to see what happens with the flash because i think the other paired announcement there was from either a week ago or a couple weeks ago which was that the birds of prey writer might be moving to take on the flash yes so which i think i said it at the time too i think indicates that dc is very happy with how birds of prey is going and everything i've heard from sort of test screenings and that seems pretty positive on the birds of prey front so you know Get that writer and sort of fresh blood director and someone with an interesting or unique vision. Um, I could be in for it. Have they confirmed that Ezra Miller is staying? Yes, he's re upped on his contract. Yeah. yeah. So so then I'm I'm even more excited, you know. You know, it's very easy for people to be like, the DCEU is dead, they fucked it up. And it's like, yeah, I mean they made mistakes, but like keep those characters around. I thought I read like a rumor that maybe the flash movie, they were looking to keep cyborg around, like to have like a little friendship there, whether they do that or not. I like that. They're just like thinking of where these pieces can fit. Um, yeah, I'm into it. I just hope eventually we move beyond who might be making the flash movie and get to them making the flash movie. (laughs) It's getting insane. (laughs) I know it's kind of crazy. eh? I'm just glad that they re-upped his contract because I, I would hate for them to have he, to. He's good. I, it would be a shame to lose him. For yeah. sure. Uh, all right. Well, that's it for DC movies. So now for the... It's time for the big show. It's the big show. Have you watched any of the trailers for the CW Arrowverse? Um, I've seen the Arrow one and the Flash one. 
So no Supergirl, no Black Lightning. I haven't seen Supergirl or Black Lightning. And there's some more, too. All right. So, well, we'll start with what you have seen, because sure. I haven't watched any of these. I've Well, I've, then why don't we watch those? You I've, ab- see them. I've abstained. Uh, <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Was I not? Supp- I'm supposed to like save it so that it would be my like first reactions. I, I wanted, I wanted it to be your first time. Yeah. See, you're 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 a girl with experience. Oh, jeez. Why why are you being creepy about it? When am I not creepy about it? Fair. <laughs> jeez. To explain myself. It's the big. So we're watching Arrow first. Arrow season eight. That's right. Final season. Uh, so let's have a look. I'm only seven seasons behind. Wow, they were able to do the impossible and make Arrow seem interesting. Well, I mean, it's literally a sizzle reel from the past seven seasons. Yeah, Most yeah. of the clips are just what has happened. Most of the clips are people getting stabbed. Uh, a lot of clips of people getting stabbed. There is a quick montage of like... Stab! Stab! Yeah, Moira stab. Queen and then Oliver Queen. <laughs> like Laurel. Like a bunch of them getting stabbed at once. Yeah, for the most part, this is like a lot of the clips are from the past seasons. This is obviously the final season. They're trying to say like everything is built to this we get that like last little stinger that we got from the end of last season with the monitor saying like you know it's time i've seen you i've seen you die oliver queen you're coming with me um obviously this season is only 10 episodes long which means it basically ends at crisis on infinite earth wow another thing they were able to do make me more interested because it's not very much of the era yeah (laughs) We, the the bits where we see a little bit of new footage, there's a new Black Canary outfit. Yes. Or, sorry, Black Siren outfit, Black I Siren, guess. yes. Um, that looks a lot like the Smallville Black Canary outfit, actually. With oh, the sort yeah. of short jacket, short hair, the domino mask. It actually looks quite... Domino a- Harvey. <laughs> it looks quite a bit like the Smallville one, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, pretty cool, though. Pretty cool looking. Um but yeah, I mean, there's not a ton of footage from the new season in there. I am curious, like, what do you do for 10 episodes that makes Oliver's story in Star City meaningful, but also sets up, like, this big cosmic crisis, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, obviously, it's very much centered around that Oliver's time on this Earth is limited. So I wonder, like, what is the, the sort of final push in Star City? What's the micro version of his final sacrifice before we get the big crisis on Infinite Earths. Can I can I take a stab at what I think is going to happen? Sure. He's going to learn that he can't do everything on his own, that he needs to like Ooh. work as a family. Like, is it work as a family? Yeah. I don't have friends. I have family. <laughs> Vin Diesel will show up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you'd hope after all these years he would learn that. He has a... I, what are you I talking about? Say, he learns that every single episode. I would episode say his superpower for- is short-term memory loss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he suffers from short-term memory loss. Oh, yeah. He can't remember. Nice. Yeah. Uh, now for another one that I'm not a caught up on. Okay. Supergirl. Supergirl, yeah. I haven't seen this one. And and I'm not caught up on the show, so this will be uh, eye-opening for me. But I'm pretty sure last season they did a version of, like, Red Sun, you know, it's with but with Supergirl. Um, I think she gets a new outfit this year. I've seen some pictures. Wow. Um, and we know we got Lex Luthor last year uh, in the form of John Cryer. That's so, right. So I'm yeah. assuming it's, we're going to get some more Johnny. Yeah, in let's, let's have a look. More Ducky. So, was this full of clips from last season, too? Did Lex have his full fucking Lex armor last season? Do I have to go back and watch fucking Supergirl? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, that was that was actually dope. I, do you know what? I've had a sneaking suspicion that I've actually been missing out by not watching Supergirl. Because yeah. I, I think more than any of the other shows, and this trailer definitely leans into it, this is a show that really tries to tackle like a particular like social justice message or, or something or something like that. <laughs> totally. And multiple seasons of Supergirl have done it from like immigration to, you know, all, all sorts of things. Supergirl I'll really- you damn kids on your cell phones. Well, yeah, yeah, ex- exactly. But like, yeah, I mean, that, like all the stuff with Lex was really cool looking in there. I love that new costume. They ditched the skirt. They went yeah. with the full like super suit. Yeah, uh, that's rad. I looks like that. Great. I think she got bangs too. Yeah, a little. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm. I I'm pretty convinced that I've been missing out, and I need to go back to Supergirl. Yeah, and and watch. 
Um, because there's a lot of stuff. I know, like, Legion of Superhero, like, Brainiac 5, like, big roles last season. Like, lots of stuff in there. Obviously, Martian Manhunter always. Uh, that was the big reveal from season one. I think I need to go back and revisit. I can't catch up on this many seasons, but I'm... I'm- I might not start from the beginning, but I might jump in season three or something. Yeah, and just yeah. sort of let's see where we are more recently. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it definitely looks interesting for sure. And I like looks the like stuff yeah. for sure. Now, we're about to meet me where I'm at. Flash. Flash. You're actually caught up. Oh, hell yeah. Let's do it. I'm very excited for this one. So, Ramsey Rosa, or Rosso. Um, is a relatively new character, like within the last couple of years Mm -hmm. in Flash comics. But he's a villain called Bloodwork. And he basically has like hemokinesis and like hemomorphology, meaning like he's made of blood and can control and generate blood. Wow. Uh, Yeah. Um, uh, I don't know if he's necessarily the big bad for the full season or if it's like a Dr. Alchemy thing where he's kind of like in the first bit, but then there's like a bigger villain, but that's who's monologuing through that whole trailer. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm uh, the, the flash was good in season. Five. Yeah. I was all about it. You know, like, the, you know, individual episodes, you go like, yeah, but like generally as a season, that's the best I felt about it since season two. Um, and there's been a, 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 cl- a dark cloud that's been hanging over the flash and we weren't sure when the storm was coming only to find out this San Diego comic-con it's not happening. Carlos Valdez is not leaving. Yeah, I thought it was, like, announced. Yeah, and now he's not leaving. Huh. Or maybe he's going to leave partway through the season. He's, it says, Something the Flash says he's not leaving the show. Like, he says Carlos Valdez says he's I not mean leaving that, the I show. I mean, that's dope. I mean, they, it really looked that way. Maybe they actually thought it was happening. That would be my circumst- guess. Circumstances changed or something. Yeah. Either way, I'm stoked. I'm yeah. think, I think it gives them an opportunity to do something interesting, I like, hopefully. So I, with I hope we get more vibe. Especially with the way that the v- vibe ended last season. Yeah. Like, I feel like they were... Although, I guess we can't, right? He he got rid of his powers. Yeah. Oh, fuck. He's just he's back to the tech help. Yeah. He's back to making whatever dampener they need. Yes. <laughs> Rather than just, like, escaping, he's yeah. now back to dampening. Interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm all about it. And then, of course, you know, the, the thing from last season is that the crisis clock has moved up to 2019 from yes, 2024. that's right. So, like Arrow, this show is also building towards something because they are aware of that change, I think. Um, so, exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> this next one I am not looking forward to. Uh, my brother watch- watches this still. Well, I don't See, know I how. hopped off in season two. So, I... And he still loves to now. He's now he started uh, messaging me about saying like really exciting movies are happening, but then James Remar is casted in them. Right. Like this most recent one was that he was just he's like Terminator Dark Fate. No, he was like <laughs> he's like oh, did you hear that they were doing Superman for all seasons? <laughs> I was like that's I'm like really I'm like I didn't hear that. That's amazing. I love that. He's like yeah, James Remar is playing uh, 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 Clark Kent's dad, it's like Jonathan Kent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He thinks that's really funny. I do too. And I, I really despise him for that. Yeah. Uh, so let's watch. Let's watch Black Lightning. Put on the trailer. Well, there's the whole Markovian thing. Which is interesting because that's a connection through like the outsiders in the comics. Black Lightning was a member of that team put together by Batman. So was Geoforce, Prince Breon Markov of Markovia. Um, Markovia has a history of trafficking metas. Mm. Um, that's what your father used to say. <laughs> I mean, it looks like I missed some intense stuff in season two, like that Tobias ripping out painkillers spine and yeah. stuff like that. I was like, Oh fuck. Yeah. You could tell by the reaction from James Remar. Yeah. Everything is going wrong now. 
She's so powerful. He's so bad. I gotta say the if action, died, I'd be the action the that they showed in those clips. Like I, I do kind of miss some of that stuff from season two. I'm interested. I'm more interested in season three by that little sort of stinger for sure. The idea that we're bringing in the wider comics, yeah, universe, Markovia, possibly seeing Geoforce, maybe you know, yeah. maybe we're building to the Outsiders, like Katana, Metamorpho, like some characters like that. Would We'd be, certainly be better. Would be pretty neat. Or Halo, even. Like, some of those other characters Halo, that have been on that team. Halo. I could be your Halo. 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 Um, Halo. Yeah, I mean, did it, did are you inspired to give it another go? God, no. But in, it, in spite of so, James Remar? No, but, in, but it more so. Right. Like, if, if in, like, a year or two from now, when I have, like, literally nothing else to watch, I can look back on this and go, hmm, maybe, and then probably still not watch it. Okay, but here's a question. If in the clips from season two, you saw Gamby getting killed, would you be like, yeah, I'm in for season three? Yeah, oh, definitely. It's literally still just Jason. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's Reaver, literally yeah. The, the, the thing that keeps me. I mean, the costumes have got, it seem a little bit better this season. Yeah. Uh, so that helps. Yeah. Because Gamby's one, and then costumes are two. Right. And then dialogue is three. <laughs> sure. Dialogue yeah. seems like it's gotten slightly better. I Yeah, I mean, my, my, <laughs> my issue, I mean, where I jumped off in season two, like maybe four or five episodes in, was yeah. that nothing happened. Yeah. So it looks like all the clips there were, Things like, are were like the back half of that season because like I jumped off and I was just like, Come, get to it. Like, get yeah. to what are we doing? Yeah, it just felt like it wasn't picking it up. Wasn't and, and, I, like... and I jumped off. I only have so many hours in the day for things. Um, if you know they're going on these like covert espionage mis- missions yeah. to another country, I think like I might jump back on for season three. Let, let's let's see how it goes. I'd be into it. I think definitely. Yeah. Uh, all right. This next one I highly anticipated. We've gotten a little taste of it from the crossover this year. Yeah. Time for the Batwoman trailer. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It's pretty tight. Fuck, I can't wait for that. Again, you know, like the pilot is clearly set before last year's crossover because she's Batwoman when we meet her yeah. in Elseworlds. This is clearly set before that. I wonder if then the series jumps forward or if this whole series is like prequel. No, I can't imagine. I kind of hope it's just the pilot yeah. that we jump to now. Yeah, to I where would we just, are. that but would be my guess. I, I like it. I like the idea that like. Batman is missing. It makes it, it's going to be like her city. The characterization looks really solid. You know, like it, all of the main components of Kate Kane seem to be present in in that pilot. There's been uh, talk that we're going to get a pretty major villain for the season too. And yeah, I think the talk was that some Batman villains were mm-hmm. going to be. I, I we, and as cool as that is, Batwoman has good villains. I still hope they go maybe more supernatural. Like Batwoman yeah. fights like water demons and yeah, like you know like, yeah. like kind of weird magic crap. Like for a bit, she teamed up with like Clayface and Ragman and like some of those type of characters. Like yeah. I kind of want to see that totally. So if they can balance, you know, here's a Riddler episode with the stuff that is like. Batwoman, yeah, or like the cult yeah. of crime stuff like that then i'm in, then i'm in hell yeah i don't just want it to be batman's villains with batwoman no um this next trailer i'm really excited but we've gotten teasers up to this point watchman oh yeah have you seen this yet i have let's do it oh i haven't seen it yet i'm so excited <laughs> i'm sure i've kept myself sure for this <laughs> that's a first I mean, so much is in this. We get a really clear idea that this takes place like now, based you know how much older Ozymandias is. Yeah, we see. I assume that's meant to be Silk Spectre, but now going by with the comedian's last name, she's Lori Blake. Mm-hmm. Um, you know she's working for the FBI now. Again, we like it. it it's staying true to Watchmen in. The layers of political intrigue. What is the war? How is the world reacting to the idea of vigilantism? Yeah, yeah superheroes. Yeah. How does it invade pop culture? How does it shape our view of law and order? All of those kind of things. This show seems to be really hewing true to that. But like, fuck, there's a shot of Doctor Manhattan on Mars in there. Yeah, uh, you know, there's like a cult of Rorschach, which is probably tied to, like, you know, his journal. 
you know, which exposes the lie of the world that they live in that Vite sort of that Ozymandias constructed at the end of the actual watch Watchmen. You know, Jeremy Irons is up to something. Has Ozymandias in there. Yeah. We get a little shot, I think, of Dr. Manhattan there at the end. It seemed like it. Uh, yeah. I saw Blue Hand. I think that's John Osterman. But Fuck. or it, or just a tease to make you think that or whatever. But um we see the uh, we see uh, Archimedes, uh, Archie, the like the night owl's like vehicle. Uh, yeah. that's in there. Like there's a there's a lot of stuff in there. I'm I'm down for Watchmen. Yeah, that's, that's when you're watching. Oh, so, without yeah. a doubt, from the beginning, I I can't believe how much is in this. I like the idea that the that the cops are are now like putting on masks and yeah, technically to protect their identities and families. But then, you know, we we know just from the internet what does anonymity do to your humanity? Mm-hmm. You know, it, cops are already like b- already border yeah. on tools of fascism. Now, if people if you empower even- them to like lose their own self, then like you've got like a really dangerous, basically private army, which is really interesting. Yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to this a lot. Yeah, this looks really good. This next one kind of took me by surprise. I knew this was coming, but I did not know it was going to come like this. I haven't seen the trailer, but everything I've heard online. I'm very excited for this. Have you watched this already? Yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see what you think of it. It's the Harley Quinn. Uh, yeah. Animated. Yeah. Make sure you start from the beginning. There, yeah. Here we go. I love that. <laughs> I, I really don't like Kaylee Cuoco. Sure. But but you don't have to watch her act. No, I just yeah, but I know that she's there and I don't sure. think her voice really matches Harley's. That being said, everything else looks amazing. It looks really funny. It looks super funny. And we've seen like Kite Man is in there. Yeah. Doctor Psycho is in there. Um it just looks like mayhem. There's like a few shots of Aquaman getting his ass kicked, which is very funny. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm really looking for it. It looks like Harley and Ivy have a comic accurate relationship, at least yeah. just from the couple of shots in this trailer. It's true. Um I'm I'm really excited for this Harley Quinn series. I think at first I was like, yeah. Yeah, but me like, too. Yeah. It looks like it's doing it right. Making it right like was a really interesting move and I have some fun for it. be a little irreverent, you know. You get to call people a dickhead and stuff yeah. like I like the relationship with Batman in it. Yeah. That seems really funny. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she's clearly done with the Joker. Yeah. From what we see in there. Uh yeah, Clayface seems to have like a part in this. That's uh, right. Yeah, I'm I'm into it. I'm pretty excited for that Harley Quinn one. Absolutely. So that's coming to DC Universe. That's the one thing we haven't been mentioning. So Watchmen is HBO. Um, Harley Quinn is coming to DC Universe. Basically, all the other ones are CW. Well, I mean, and, and we should go with that uh, because uh, I have a couple other pieces of uh, news that aren't trailers here, yeah. but uh, that are related to TV, which is one uh, uh, that the DC Universe uh, uh, and the future of the streaming service has finally been cleared out a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I it just looks like. They don't want to make things like Swamp Thing, which is kind of a shame because I really like Swamp and Thing. And everybody seems to. But they renewed Doom Patrol. They, We're getting a second season of Doom though, Patrol. And, and, and it's not just coming out on uh, on DC Universe. It's yeah. also coming out on this Warner Brothers new app. Yeah, that too. And then um, I think the idea in general, too, is that for places where DC Universe is not accessible, they're trying to strike deals so you can also watch. You know, like, I think Harley Quinn might also stream on Adult Swim or something like that. Like, so that, like, they've started striking deals so that they can get better viewership, things like that, which they should have done right from the beginning, but whatever. Um, uh, but Doom Patrol has been renewed for season two. Titan season two drops in September. Hell yeah. So soon. Um, we're still, we still have yet to get Stargirl. That show is coming. Yeah. Um, so uh, I don't think they've necessarily announced new series beyond what they announced when they launched the service. But we're getting but a lot of sequels to it, stuff. But that it's we've... not done. 
No, it's and not over. Um, speaking and of, I think that maybe can assuage some some fear. I mean, for sure. she likes Swamp Thing. You're right to be disappointed. Blah 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 blah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, of course. Um, but the service itself is not doesn't seem to be in trouble. It's just they're for whatever reason moving away from that. Whether it was the money or the story or whatever. Um, and speaking of continuations of series, uh, uh, Young Justice is going to get a oh, fourth right. season. That's the other one. Yes, that's right. Yeah, Young Justice will get a season four. So a ton of really good, uh, uh, considering DC was kind of light in their sort of uh, uh, presence here this you know, year. It's, it's one of those things where it's like there wasn't like necessarily a ton of fan. You don't go into Hall H and just go like, here's a sizzle reel from seven seasons of Arrow. Yeah, no. But you... If you look at what DC like brought, they're like, no, like we're committed to this. We're doing it. And they're like, they've got a lot of TV shows more than Marvel has right now, at yeah. least. And I mean, a little bits of news aside, there's a bunch of things that are big that we saw that they didn't say anything about. That they're playing close to the chest. Birds of Prey, yep. Wonder Woman 1984. We didn't even get another Joker Nothing. trailer. No. Like, you know, like uh, Shazam 2, Black Adam, uh, The Flash, obviously very in limbo. The Batman, no more real like casting announcements or anything. Like there's, there is still big lots of stuff big coming. stuff that is coming. So considering what they did bring, that's a pretty good showing for Hell DC. Hell yeah, it is. That it was, yeah. I, I, think, I, I think of all of these things, the one that, I, that I'm like, Oh fuck! Is like Watchmen, the right? One, the one thing that I sh- that you know we all should basically just be like, I don't know, should we? <laughs> like, yeah. But it, it, I mean, at least from a trailer, they're telling a unique story that like feels like it, it should exist. Feels very true to the spirit of the original. At least well, from what we're, we were being shown, like yeah. you know, obviously reserve final judgment, but like thematically tonally like that visually yeah. yeah like art direction all that kind of stuff that show looks like it's fucking nailing Watchmen which I mean that's, I'm, I am yeah. probably the most excited for that that and then uh, Crisis on uh, Infinite Earths you know we got the news that Burt Ward signed on for that that uh, Brandon Routh is playing Kingdom Come Superman Tyler Hecklin will be back as Supergirl Superman I love uh, that they're using this opportunity to kind of play with other concepts for uh, DC characters yeah. and like other people who've played these parts and yeah. I'd love I mean we're almost certainly that, yeah. hopefully going to get John Wesley Ship back as Earth 90 Flash I hope we get you know I is it too much uh, Linda Carter is like she plays the president on Supergirl. Is it like too much to ask for her to show up as Wonder Woman? Right? <laughs> is that too She's crazy? already on one of the shows. She's already in there. Like, can we get fucking Wonder Woman in there? Right? Like, do you think there's a version of this where we actually get a Justice League lineup? Like, it wouldn't be a thing moving forward in the shows, but for you know, one scene we get a Superman. We get like I don't Bat see why Woman, not. Yeah, get, but like a member from because they teased. Last year, that like on it on Earth ninety, yes. John Diggle was Green Lantern. You know, like, do we get a full Justice League lineup that would in this? Would, would, is that too much a to ask? Ball or move? I don't think so because it's like they've already talked about get most of these characters. Get a, get Batwoman. You've got the Flash. Get a Green Lantern. Get John Diggle. Like John Stewart, Green Lantern. From it's not out of the get realm of Aquaman, possibilities. Get Martian Manhunter. Like, I think you can do it. I think so too. Honestly, yeah. I, I, it's not another realm of possibilities. I, I'm I'm stoked for that. I'm stoked for Red Sun. I uh, there's a lot of really good stuff coming, and uh, yeah, I, I think for taking I think a, it's a pretty solid out. Taking a lighter presence this year, I, it doesn't feel that much like it. I'll be honest. Yeah, to not have a Hall H and then still basically unload lots of cool news, cool trailers. Hell yeah, some cool hype, and you know, like I again, like I said off the top, I it demonstrates a level of like maturity and self-confidence to not have to be like here's seven movies we're gonna make yeah because they're because marvel's yeah, doing you know like yeah. Mar- this is old hat for marvel it's true they, they could easily do that they have a system yeah fucking works. also 90 percent of the time when they say they're gonna do it they actually do it so well exactly like dc is now seems to be confident in their what they're producing and yeah. the way they're producing it and taking their time and sort of 
holding back. We don't have to market things for two exactly. years. And They're like, finally like I'm very, very pleased confident. with that. I'm happy to have less news, but have everything be good. Exactly. <laughs> um, but maybe we missed something. Maybe, uh, maybe we, we've got we've got thoughts about this that maybe are contradictory to what you think. Yeah. So let us know. Uh, uh, reach out to us online and talk to us about what you thought. Yeah. Uh, I'm definitely curious. Um, you can reach us uh, through this various social media platforms, such as our Facebook. Dr. DC Podcast. Our Twitter. At Dr. DC. Our Instagram. Dr. DC Podcast. Email. Dr. DC Podcast at gmail.com. Of course, we've got a fun subreddit. R slash Dr. Underscore DC. And of course, not only can you talk to us online, but you can read some of our DC specific artists or you can buy our merch. Buy our merch. Buy our merch. Uh, and of course, the doc phone is open. Yeah. Give us a call at 208-917-3238. That's D-208-917. DCEU. That's right. And our website is drdcpodcast.com or .ca. That's right. Uh, that's it for this week. I uh, hope you enjoyed for this, this ex- special this extra. Bo- you get a bonus episode and you didn't even have to sign up for our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Dr. DC. But if you, you, got, you got a little taste of San Diego Comic Con. We only talked about DC here. But if we're you gonna- want to hear all the non-DC news and we're oh. going to fucking unload. Oh my God. I, I The amount of pre-cum that's coming out of me right now for this. <laughs> yeah, you've got like a bucket under your chair. Yeah, yeah. And that's just the pre-cum. It sounds like your roof is leaking. I mean, in a way it kind of is. <laughs> There's so much. Sign up for the Patreon. This week's episode that comes out on Friday is going to be all of the non-DC Comic-Con Hell announcements. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Baby. <laughs> hey, mama. <laughs> hey, mama. <laughs> oh. oh. Your wife loves that. Uh, that's it for this week. Uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll we'll talk to you on our, uh, on our Patreon. Does this come out pre or post our regular I think, episode? I feel like we, this, this should go out first yeah so we'll see you tomorrow. tomorrow for the regular episode yeah exactly and then uh and then you'll get friday if you get to the patreon that's right oh yeah all right that's adios it. ciao ciao mama This was a Brain Freeze podcast.